Hello, welcome to the Friday, January 4th, 2019 edition of the Science and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Xavier ran into a crypto coin miner and well, uh, what he was able to do actually is get a list of other infected systems. The trick here was that this particular crypto coin miner is uploading a small file with system information to an FTP server and the file name is the IP address of the victim. Now, Xavier was not able to download these files, but he was able to get a directory listing that then gave him the ability to enumerate all the victim's IP addresses and he plotted a nice map showing them. Now, he counted a total of 35,000 unique infected systems, which was over the course of about two days. And as so often these days with these crypto coin miner scripts, it also includes a fairly extensive list of possible competitors that it will kill. And it looks like a large number of dormant Twitter accounts was hijacked and then used to spread propaganda for the Islamic State. The problem being exploited here is that in the past, Twitter did not actually require a verified email account in order to open a Twitter account. So you could enter essentially a more or less random email address and you didn't even have to prove that you owned that email address. Now, what's happening now apparently is that the attackers are finding these accounts and then they're actually registering these email addresses. If the domain is one of the well-known public email hosting services like Gmail, Hotmail, and the user ID was never used because it's just a random characters or the like, then the attacker can register the email address and then use it in order to reset the password for this dormant account and then of course take over. Only in June of last year, Twitter started to require that email addresses are actually verified, which makes this particular attack a little bit more difficult because now the address actually exists. And then of course, it's less likely that an attacker is able to take over the address. Well, while in past months we had a number of iOS passcode bypasses, this time it's Android's time and the bypass is actually rather simple. It does, however, require that Skype is running on the phone and the attacker has to know the Skype user ID of the user that owns the phone. The way the exploit works is that the attacker will just call the phone via Skype. Now, Skype is still accepting calls even if the phone is locked and once the attacker then accepts the call via Skype then Skype has access to various features on Android like for example the pictures that are saved on the phone. This one is a little bit a tricky one to prevent uh, because you do want to be able to accept uh, phone calls even if the phone is locked and a lot of people are using Skype like a phone service. Of course one option here would be that you have to actually enter your passcode or to authenticate somehow before you're able to accept the call. So you would still hear the call ringing. You just wouldn't be able to accept it until you authenticate. And well, I hope everybody has applied the Adobe updates that were released late in December because we have yet another one to start the new year. This update, APS B19-02, fixes two critical vulnerabilities that can lead to code execution and affects Adobe Acrobat and Reader. Now, this one only has a priority of two, meaning that there is no known exploit available for it. They were reported by the Trend Micro Zero Day Initiative, which implies that the researchers found and reported these vulnerabilities. 
And then we got a kind of odd Christmas gift from the authors of the Files Locker Random Variant. These authors came up with a special Christmas edition of their ransomware. Now, this Christmas edition does as what ransomware does. It encrypts your files and then displays a message that your files are encrypted. Now, it gives it a little bit a Christmas theme to the image that's being displayed, but it then also opens a pastebin page that does include the master decryption key. So using this RSA key, all files encrypted with Files Locker can be decrypted. A decryptor using this key has been released, so you should be able to decrypt any files that were encrypted using this particular strain of ransomware. Well, and this is it for today. Thanks again for listening. And uh, by the way, my schedule for next year is almost sort of finalized. So if you're interested in any training, the next public training I'll be part of uh, will be actually in Munich and Madrid in March. It will be the Defending Web Application class and the Intrusion Detection in Depth class. So maybe I'll see some of you there. Links to it can be found on the podcast page. Thanks. And that's it for today. And talk to you again on Monday. Bye.